Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Today I would like to talk about toenail fungus. And please stick until end of the video because I'm not kidding but you can literally save someone's life. I'm not trying to be dramatic, that's totally true. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this one or any other videos on my channel, can I please ask you a huge favor? Please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button so you don't miss any videos uh, on my channel. Also, I would like to emphasize this video comes from a series of videos. I'm not a doctor. Seriously, guys, I'm not a doctor. I'm the guy that reading a lot of research papers trying to uh, keep up with latest research and translating it to plain English so I supply enough information for all people that are interested to understand about more about their health and how to help themselves in not so trivial situations so let's start I intended to make that video a long time ago and um, uh, amount of information keep coming and my research was totally overwhelming and, and I guess I wasn't ready to give half of that information away because it might have confused people rather than help. So let's start from the beginning why it is so important to me. My family and I from the moment I was born I remember always fought uh, neofungus. It's actually terrible. At some stages uh, it may eat nail to the nail bed and peel away and it looks disgusting it's not contagious by the way but it looks disgusting it looks painful and it is painful it's not visually appealing it's not something you ever would like to get All right so uh, I start I start kind of um, thinking what can I do about this because I had enough look uh, you would like to go uh, swim in the ocean in a swimming pool people look at you like uh, hey you know don't come to a swimming pool it's looking really disgusting what if I get it uh, go away you know that was really not pleasant um, so I start talking to uh, friends and doctors and I say hey there's a lacquer that you can kind of put on nail and within a couple of months to a year uh, while nail bed will grow and nail will grow out, it will actually fix itself. Well, I tried for two years. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. And I say, you know, enough is enough. Um, I, will, I will see if there's any oral medicine I will take. I can take. So, um, I don't want to name any names. So, uh, there's a one medicine that works for many people. But, you know, doctors warn it's, it's pretty um, strong medicine try see how you go on my fourth tablet i had such a big immune reaction um, end up in hospital it was pretty severe allergic reaction that i it was my ever first ever reaction in my in my entire life and like oh what's going on so um it took me probably a good three years to get over that reaction i was in fear of that i say you know what I will live with neofungus uh, forever. I just don't want to experience that anymore. I feel like I'm just dying. And then I say, you know what? I had enough as well. There should be some sort of cure. It's it's unfair that I've got it. So I went to a different doctor and say, look, I took that medication. It resulted in in reaction. What um, what would you suggest? He said, look. There's no much you can do. That's the only one that works. But you've got other medications that. Um, basically reduce uh, yeast infection in women. I don't want to mention anymore. Um, but also yeast and fungus basically very correlating to one another. Would you like to try that one? I said, yeah, sure. So I started taking that medication and after two months, my neofungus started growing out. And after probably six to seven months, my neofungus disappeared. I was rejoicing. That was probably the best moment of my life. I, I didn't expect ever to get rid of the fungus. And uh, when uh, nail grew out completely, was no fungus, I stopped medication. Well, guess what? On a second month, fungus reappeared. So I went to the doctor and asked for more supply and was taking that medication for a year until I ran out and I was in fear again to get fungus. 
So I went to the doctor and I said, hey, I just ran out of supply. And, and he said, hey, you seriously taking the medication for a year? I said, yeah, what's the problem? I say, oh, look, you need to stop. I'm like, why? I say, if you continue, your liver may fail. And like, wow, doctor told me to stop medication. It never before happened to me. They're usually happy to prescribe stuff and off you go. Uh, he was really concerned. So I started um, digging deeper because it sounds so serious. And um, I started digging deeper. I understand that um, toenail uh, fungus is one of the problems with liver and associated with liver disease. And like, wow, I do have problem with liver. And by the way, problem with liver, there's not that many blood tests you can do that would indicate that you got problem with liver until it's too late. When it's too late, it's really too late. You don't want to have problem with liver. So um, there are six signs that your liver might start failing. And I would like to list them all. And by the way, toenail fungus is number six. So let's start with the first one. It's basically, if you look at towards uh, um, end of the feet and the end of the leg, you will see, may see red and brown dots, usually in lower leg. Well, this would indicate in poor uh, blood circulation and uh, just basically poor circulation or filtration of the blood. And actually uh, it, may be, it might be um, a sign of diabetes which is um, most likely would result in uh, kidney and liver disease. The number two, sign number two that you've got a problem with liver, it's kind of, again, towards end of the uh, leg, you have like what they call spider veins. Um, it's basically like little spider uh, web. Actually, if you see it, definitely immediately look for a, a doctor's help. Um, it basically indicates on psoriasis, that's the last stage of uh, liver disease, which basically almost like liver failure. Uh, the, another one is that I can see uh, many people fighting and what they find, they uh, find by exfoliating the uh, feet, it's a cracked heels. And looks like, uh, you know, you, you basically exfoliate your heels and you apply some cream and um, happy days. Uh, seriously, there's a reason for cracked heels. It could be vit vitamin B3 deficiency or and omega-3 fatty uh, acid deficiency. Our diets, most, most of the fats that we consume, they are omega-6s. And omega-6s are counteract omega-3s. People think, oh yeah, omega is omega. No way. If your omega-3 levels are low, there's all sorts of problems including liver problems. So crack heels, vitamin B3 and omega-3s, really important. Then itching of the bottom of the foot. That's the interesting one because it's like, hey, you know, how is that a problem? It basically indicates of uh, uh, liver basically clogged up or there's a fluid retention in the liver. Liver is a filter of the human body. If it's clogged, you know, the whole system is in trouble. So please talk to your doctor about that. Um, another disease called uh, pitting edema. Uh, I think it's like almost like uh, later stages of liver failure. So towards end of the f like leg, they a little bit chunky. And when you press on the skin and with the finger and you take your um, finger off, it's kind of the dent stays. So it's basically fluid retention in a, in, a, in a leg and it does indicate that liver is filling as well. And the last one is toenail fungus. Why is that? It basically starts with um, actual not the liver, it starts in the gut. So we've got overgrowth of um, imbalance with, of, of flora, which basically result in uh, um, a lot of uh, yeast uh in the body and it results in a breeding fungus so the result of that condition could be either or uh it could be a toenail fungus it could be dandruff or could be both so if you got one of those both of those are funguses right and 
definitely go and check uh, with doctor what can you do. However, it's very interesting. When you go into the doctor, they're all about medication. So what I'm trying to say is, please, um, I'll include actually a video uh, uh, link uh, in the description. Please watch my video in, uh, on, on the ketogenic diet and low carb diet. So basically, most of the liver problems, besides genetic ones, would result in um, a poor diet. So if you consume a lot of fructose, and of course uh, glucose, but fructose is a cheaper way of, um, of sweet stuff, it will result in fatty liver. Fatty liver would create all sorts of problems. So most of the things could be fixed with that. I fixed my with ketogenic diet, but everyone's different. So let's see what our main six um, causes of liver problems. The first one, side effect of medication as I mentioned of uh, about um, dandruff and, and uh, toenail fungus it start in gut so when people take too many antibiotics it's totally kills bacteria in the gut so you take uh, and uh, all that medication yes it kills pathogens right but it also kills bacteria in a way gut requires good balance of bacteria if one bacteria dominates over another problems will arise. So uh, medication can cause fatty liver or liver disease. Second one and most common one is high sugar diet. When I say high sugar, it's actually high in fructose because sugar would basically spike insulin when fructose does not spike insulin and goes straight in the liver and, um, um, and results in the process where basically liver deposit fats around itself and become uh, suffocated. So um, watch your diet. That helps a lot to avoid uh, liver diseases. Uh, the third one, too much of cooked foods. What that even means? Um, well, you may um, uh, guess that heat uh, destroys nutrients. So if you consume um, food for flavor, could be a lot of MSG, could be a lot of uh, empty nutrition food um, our body expect nutrients as vitamins and minerals if you don't supply that liver wouldn't uh, wouldn't function well uh, and fourth one low amount of vegetables in a diet when I say vegetables I really would like to emphasize cruciferous vegetables because they fight uh, estrogens and also uh, uh, green leafy vegetables um, spinach kale all of those so don't go crazy on them but you must include them in your diet to have a good liver number five that people thought would be number one but it's actually number five excessive alcohol reason why it's number five it's not that not uncommon it's basically given people know when they consume alcohol alcohol is a toxin cannot be processed by body at all it goes straight to liver and by the way when people consume alcohol um, liver stops all its processes to break down uh, toxins and alcohol. So you're not only overloading liver, you basically also stopping liver from attending to any other process in the body. So um, be careful with alcohol, consume responsibly what they say. And the uh, last one, it's actually quite a surprise one, excessive consumption of protein. You either on carnivore diet, or you gym junkie that believe there's never enough protein, or for some reason you lean heavy on other proteins. Be careful because protein, while it's not harmful um, uh, element, in high consumption it may damage kidneys and liver. So here you go, guys. Here's my life journey. I'm fungus free, toe fun uh, toe fungus. Uh, Tony or fungus free for a year. I fixed it with my diet. I could not believe that medication didn't work, but diet did. As a side note, while I was fixing a uh, toenail fungus, I believe I helped my liver a lot. I really put this video out totally out of comfort zone because no one uh, wants to talk about their funguses and other health problems. But here you go. It was so important to me, so bugging me all my life that I'm putting myself out there, out of my comfort zone to make sure that others uh, can make their own decisions 
and help others if required. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please do me a favor. Please hit the subscribe button and notification icon so I can put more content up so Google will promote my content so I can help more people out there. Have a great day.